book. Has everyone got? I've got more. Ah, you can hear me better now. Okay. Just in case we are waiting for more people, um, I was I was asked to come here by Serva, which is Serva, which is the Canadian Russian Business Association. Um, has anyone been to Canada? Yeah. Well, what's your name? India. India. Where did you go? To, where did you go in Canada? Not bad. Did you like it? Yeah. Similar weather to Russia. People say that um, Russians, Ukrainians like to emigrate to Canada because the weather is similar. Maybe, maybe that's not the only reason. Did you go there just to visit or to study or work? Okay. I'm actually a mixture. My mother is from Canada, my father is from England. So that's why I have an English accent in English. Uh, I have a very strong Quebec accent and very Russian accent, accent. But usually, even after many years here, people think I'm from, you know, Baltic states. You know, especially in Moscow, it's like, you know, I teach you so people to be on a So, apologies in advance. So we'll do it in English. Here we are. Okay. As Svetlana said, just in case anyone else arrives, um, I represent. Oh, good evening, somebody else. Come and take a look. My company is Antal Russia. It's a British executive recruitment company. Um, What's the difference between executive recruitment and executive search? Does anybody know? No? Okay. Um, executive search is the real sort of very, very top positions, CEOs, the sort of half million dollar a year positions that I hope you guys will eventually work yourselves, work your way up to in a few years' time. Um, you know, as we all say, but I hope in the future. Um, executive recruitment is much more the middle level. Okay, so typically the positions that we fill are people who have graduated from a good university, speak English, have started their career already, probably minimum of three years up to about 10, 12 years. Okay, um, what I wanted to do this evening was just to give you a few tips, a few pieces of advice on what to do, and also, very importantly, what not to do when looking for a job. Good evening, come in. You haven't missed very much. Could you pass, please pass one of these back? Okay, because in recruitment, when you are looking for a job, there are a lot of illusions about how the job process works. Okay? My guess from your age is that most of you don't remember much about the Soviet period. Okay? Good. Okay? However, the problem that we encounter is that even if people have no memory of the Soviet Union, unfortunately their parents do. And usually, the worst thing that people can do is to take career advice from their parents. Okay? Because a lot of people's parents either worked in a Soviet research institute or a hospital or as a teacher or in the military and they think that they can give fantastic advice to their children. And the best advice would be if they said absolutely nothing. Okay? Like, you know, his avida, but unfortunately that's true. Just to start off with, okay? Antal, we have um, 125 people in Moscow. We specialize in most areas, um, so FMCG, pharmaceuticals, banking, finance, legal, so lawyers. Um, we do a lot of work with um, IT, telecoms, and in disciplines, we do marketing. 
We also work in a lot of other countries. Um, we opened an office in Kazakhstan even. We're in, I think, 35 countries. There we are. Okay. In Russia, a lot of focus, a lot of emphasis is put on education. And I find this quite strange because people say, Luke, can I recommend you somebody? I say, yeah, please. And even if the person is 48 years old, they start telling me about which university this person graduated from. And at least where I grew up in Britain, okay, if you have a university degree, fantastic. Buy yourself a medal, now go and do some work. Okay? So, I'm not saying that education is bad, it's not, it's very, very good. But, what employers are most interested in is what you can do for them, not which university you graduated from. It's important, but it's not the most important thing. Okay? Unless you go and work for a government organisation, company, private companies exist for one reason. Okay? What's that? Money. To make money. Yes. We are all horrible capitalists nowadays. Okay? We don't work for Krasny Flag anymore. <laughs> Thank goodness. Okay? We all work to make money. So companies hire people for one of two reasons. To help them make more money or to help them save money. So that's what they're most interested in. So that's something we need to focus on. Okay? What you can do. What you've already done and what you can do. Okay, this is очень неборуски, okay? A lot of the time people say, well, I will be, you know, nice and quiet and like, you know, scrawny and once I'm already in the company, then I will show everybody how great I am. And it's like, mm -hmm. wrong approach. If you try this, you will not have a chance to show how great you are because they will not hire you unless your father is the vice president. Okay, in that case, maybe they will. But in most ordinary cases, they won't. Okay? Recently, one girl, who is a lawyer, sent me her CV. And I said, look, you, know, you have the name of the company, the date, and a job title. I said, there is no information about your achievements, your responsibilities. Oh, but I can talk about that during the interview. And I said, no, darling, you can't, because you won't get an interview. Okay? The reason you write a good CV is to get an interview. And the reason that you boast during the interview is to hopefully get another interview and then a job offer. Okay? So I realize that this is Nyparovsky. Sorry, let me just turn this off. Okay? So, don't be afraid of talking about how great you are on your CV and during interviews. Okay, please. It is important. Don't be too general. You know, negotiations with clients. Well, what does this mean? It doesn't mean anything. You know, you can negotiate, but maybe you didn't achieve anything. Okay, so write about the results. If you are in a sales position, say, you know, how much revenue you grew, which new products you promoted, uh, if you're in a finance position, talk about achievements and responsibilities. It sounds obvious, but most people actually don't do it. Okay. Far too often, people graduate and they come to me and they tell me how much they want. Okay. The first proper job that you get, you should treat the salary like a stipend. Okay? Because the company is investing in you. The company will spend much more money, time and effort on you for several years than they will get back. Okay? So, yes, you've got a fantastic degree and I'm sure you're great. But, at the beginning, good evening guys, in the beginning, when you are starting out in your career, the important thing here is the experience. Okay? Don't worry too much about how much they're going to pay you. All right? Look more 
and what you can get in the future. <coughs> right. When writing a CV, I have seen some fantastic CVs that people spoil with a stupid personal email. Okay? These are some actual real examples. Okay? I didn't make these up. These are real. So I, it's really bad to have a perfect CV with a C, you know, with an email with a Julia Pupsik at Yandex Group. Okay, don't do this, guys. Okay, like I said, it sounds obvious, but this is one thing not to do. Okay, um, I sometimes think that in this job I have seen everything, and every time I think this, something new happens. Okay, at the end of last year. Our candidate received a job offer, and before deciding whether to accept the offer or not, he went to a gadalka. He went to a fortune teller. Right? I have never heard of this before. And you can imagine what the fortune teller said. Oh, no, don't accept it. So he didn't. Although, and I don't suggest you go and see a fortune teller, please. You know, make up your own minds. Okay? S similar things. Okay? When you are, these are actual real photos that we have had from CVs. Honestly, guys, when you send a CV, when you write a CV, uh, I would actually not bother putting a photo on there at all. Okay? Um, I think it's just not necessary. But if you really want to, okay. But, you know, maybe I am, you know, boring foreign guy. But when looking for a job, you know, that's far too informal. It's just... You know, not in the right place. Okay. It partly depends on what type of job you want to get. But, again, it's like when people write hobbies on their CV. It's not relevant. The fact that you like travelling and playing tennis and listening to music. You know, who cares? Is that actually going to help you? Is that going to show, you know, is somebody going to take an interest in that? No. Right. Job hopper. Is there a Russian equivalent for this? Does anyone? Do you all understand what a job hopper is? No. Good. I, very good. Very good. Because I said to Svetlana earlier. Um, when Svetlana asked me, "Can you talk in English?" I said, "Sure." But I said, "In all the years I've been in Russia, when people don't, don't understand, they never tell me." Okay. Is anyone here been to China? No? Okay. Good. In China, people will say, and that means I'm listening but I don't understand. Okay? In Russia, I just find that if people don't understand, they will not tell you. So please don't be shy. If you don't understand me, please tell me. Okay? A job hopper, yes, is somebody who changes their job very frequently. Okay? It's not good. You need to think a little bit more about how your CV will look in the future. If your CV looks like a car crash, okay, you change far too often. Of course, a recruitment manager will think, well, this person will not stay very long with us. We will invest time and money and effort into training this person, and they will leave. Okay, so usually recruiters allow people one mistake. Actually, sometimes it's good that people have made a mistake. Otherwise, their career can be too perfect. Okay? So, remember that expression, okay, about being a job hopper. It's a very, very good expression in English. And don't do it. Okay. Who is on LinkedIn here? Let's have a better one. Who is not on LinkedIn? Right. Have you heard of LinkedIn? Is there a reason why you're not on it? Uh, I'm in a position which uh, doesn't allow to tell publicly what I do. So you work for the KGB? <laughs> uh, no, but also several letters in the name of the company. So, okay, FSB. Okay. <laughs> unless you work for the FSB, right, honestly, you know, unless there's some sort of paranoia in it, Okay, I really do suggest you go on LinkedIn. Okay, often people say like, you know, well, I'm not looking for a job. 
Well, there is a Russian expression that you need to look for a job when you don't need one. Okay? Same thing. People say to me, you know, Luke, why should I send you my CV? I'm not looking for a job. And I say, most of the people on our database are not looking for a job. But if their CV is on our database, maybe we will call them. If their CV is not on our database, then we definitely won't call them. Okay? When I started my career in recruitment, LinkedIn didn't exist. Come into now. Um, okay? I'm old enough that I remember sending CVs by fax. Okay? That shows how old I am. Okay? So, things have progressed a lot. This is a very, very useful tool. Okay? This is very different from contact and the class Nikki Facebook. Okay? This is a professional site. Um, that's a fairly simple profile of mine. Uh, it allows people to find you. Okay? It's not about photos of you know, Tatiana in a bikini and Chanel shaped by the swimming pool. Keep that separate. Okay? Keep that, honestly, just keep social things completely separate. This is, you can include your friends and your university colleagues if you like. But this is about linking up with people who might at some stage offer you a job. You never know. Okay? Often I meet people and I talk to them about a potentially new job. And people say, I hope the new interior Okay? And I hear this. And I say, how do you know? And all the, oh, well, my friend went there three years ago and he didn't like it. Or like, you know, my friend said that his friend talked to somebody there and, um, ooh, you know, the atmosphere is not so good. Okay. Why is it important to go to job interviews? Can someone tell me? Even if you think it might not be interesting. Hmm? See, the company for See the company for yourself experience. One of my friends recently was looking for a job. And sent me his CV. I sent it to some clients, and I said, oh, I have this opportunity. Oh, that's not interesting. I don't want to go there. Oh, that's not interesting. Oh, that's interesting. Yes, I'll go there. And of course, he called me afterwards and said, oh, I really like that company. I really want to work for them. But during the interview, I forgot to say this, and I should have said this differently. If you go for a job interview where you are not really that interested in it, there is much less stress. Okay, it's great practice, and because you are not desperate for the job, you will probably perform better. Okay, so it's great experience for the job that you really want. Okay, so my one piece of advice is that don't be frightened of going to job interviews and don't think that it's a waste of time, even if you're not sure. Okay. I have some people who say, I mean, some of my colleagues recruit for tobacco companies. And some candidates say, like, oh, you need to do the new business. Okay. And then I say, look, go to the interview. And some of them return, and they say, oh, I'm so glad I went there. I really like that manager. Of course, the company, what the company produces, yeah, it's important. Okay, I don't smoke, but cigarettes are legal. So, at the moment. So... It's important, the brand, the salary, where the office is located, what benefits they give, what career path. The absolute most important thing is who you work with. Okay? That's why the internet will never replace our business. Okay? Websites will not destroy what we do. It's all about who you go and see. If you like the person that you are interviewing with, there's a much higher chance that you will join that company, or if they like you, that they will take you. Okay? So, please, just don't think it's a waste of time going for interviews where you're not sure. And even more importantly, it is about building a network. You might go to that company, you're not sure about it, you perform, you show how good you are. Maybe that person will leave six months later, go to a better company, what will he do? 
he'll think, oh, I remember that person. Yeah, they were good. Yeah, I'll keep them a call. Okay? It's the same reason when people, when I talk to people about a vacancy, and they say, like, a school can you do? You and I usually say, like, Mushta Silisti, Nichuni Dad. Okay? So, it's about how you sell yourself. It's not about how much will they offer me. It all depends on you. Okay? Most companies have an idea of how much they will pay. It's usually... But if you go there, I'm great, then they either won't offer you anything, or if they do, it won't be as much as you should get. One strange thing, maybe somebody can explain this to me, despite all the years of being in Russia, I will never probably fully understand this. For some reason in Russia, it is considered perfectly normal to quit your job, spend two or three months at the dacha in the summer, and then start looking for another job again. Maybe somebody can explain to me why you do this. Have some rest. Maybe. Some rest. Okay. Is it for the search uh, for a job when uh, you are working? Really? Like 20 hours per day. Yeah. How come every other country in the world manages it? Okay. To rest, yeah. There is also an expression in English, you can sleep when you're dead. Uh, that's what I heard recently from one guy. Um, all I will say is that I don't understand it, I just know that it happens here. But if you are going for an interview with a foreign company and there is a foreigner involved in the process, it is extremely difficult to explain, even for me, to explain to a foreigner why somebody isn't working. Okay, just be aware of this. I'm not saying don't ever do it, I'm just saying be aware of this. Because to a foreigner, if somebody is not working, there is only two reasons. Number one, the person was fired. Or number two, they are lazy. Okay, as your Andropov called people. Okay, so be aware of this. I would say even more importantly, it's very difficult, you lose your bargaining power. It's very difficult to negotiate a higher salary when you don't have a salary. Okay? That even if you don't like your job, okay, you can pretend that you do. You still have a job. Where I come from, if you don't work, you don't eat. Okay? Maybe people in Russia are lucky, everybody has an apartment, you know, only a few people rent or have mortgages. Um, but maybe it's our own fault that we have mortgages and credit and credit cards and things, and we cannot afford to rest, even if we're working 20 hours a day. <coughs> but this is something please to bear in mind. I mean, we've had situations where I see a CV and the person has a good career and the person just quit. And I asked them, and they said, oh, well, there wasn't really much career growth. And the person told me the same reason. I didn't feel it was right to look for another job while I still have one. I said, why? And the person actually said, well, it's like, you know, if you have a girlfriend and you want to find a prettier one, you should leave the first one first. And I said, well, no, actually, I... This is about a job we're talking about. And I actually knew somebody in the company, and I called, and I said, is that the reason the person left? And he said, yeah. Now, we found the guy a new job, but his salary was, I think, 10, 15% lower than it could have been because he had no bargaining power, okay? Because he didn't have a job, okay? So... Please take this into account, bear this in mind. All right? I'm not saying don't ever take any time off, but you, you know, no matter how good you are at negotiating or persuading people, it is almost impossible to persuade a foreigner that you just decided to go and dig vegetables at the dacha in the summer or go to Bali for a few months and then start looking for another job. Okay, trust me on this one. In the same way that I don't fully understand it, you might not understand it, just be aware of it. Another interesting point, 
we find here is what we call counter-offers. Do people understand what this is, a counter-offer? No? Good, I'm glad that you are honest with me. What often happens is somebody decides, you go for an interview. Okay, you're still working, but you go for an interview. And you get a job offer, dream job, yep, fantastic, great, can't wait to start. You have to go to your boss to resign. Never a good thing to do. And of course, the boss doesn't want to lose you, because then that boss has to spend several months trying to find somebody new, then he has to wait for the person to start, and then he has to find, you know, spend lots of time training you. So the easiest thing to do is say, please don't leave, we love you, here is 20% more money. What I've found in all my years in Russia is that Russians make decisions based more on emotion than we do. Okay? We are boring, pragmatic, logical foreigners. Okay? Don't worry, my boss is German. He's worse. Okay? <laughs> but I do notice that there's much more emotion involved in decision making in Russia. Okay, tell me if I'm wrong. Tell me if you don't agree. But I see this. Because people think, you know, oh, they love me and they're going to pay me 20% more money. Oh, of course I will stay. <clears throat> My logic is if they thought I was so great, why did they not pay me this money before? <laughs> okay, and what often happens, especially actually in Russian companies, is that they will pay you more money to stay and quietly they will start looking for somebody else because they have already seen your loyalty. And as soon as they find somebody else, goodbye. Okay, so usually when somebody starts looking for a job, okay, and is about to join a new company, usually money is not the main reason. Sometimes it is, but usually it isn't. They don't like their boss, they don't like the job itself, the office is too far away from home, um, you know, the brand's not right. There's a number of reasons. Usually money is not the main problem. Okay? So even if the company gives you a bit more money, it's just your next pay rise coming slightly earlier. Okay? The company hasn't really solved the problem. The office is not close at home. It's the same boss, the same job. Okay? So, please, a bit less emotion, a bit more logic when you're changing your job. Okay? You need some emotion, okay? After all the years here, I've changed a little bit. Like, you know, Nippon's to a Brussel, okay? Um, but I start to see things a little bit more how, how it can be in Russia, okay? Now, right. Has anybody ever had, has anybody ever been to a recruitment company for a job interview here? Anyone? Yeah? Good. Sorry, what's your name? Yeah. Alexei. Alexei. Um, was it that you sent your CV to them or did they find you on a website or...? No, they found on the uh, HH... Oh, Headhunter. Yes, Headhunter. Yeah. So they just called me and uh, asked whether I'm interested in some vacation. Vacancy? Vacancy. Everybody's interested in vacation. <laughs> Careful. <laughs> Don't worry. A lot of people make that mistake. Okay. Um, it's the, the other one we get regularly. People, instead of thank you for your message, they say thank you for your massage. Okay. <laughs> one of the first mistakes I made when I came to Russia. Okay. The word nichevo has two meanings in, in English. It means okay and nothing. And my chazyaika gave me some kasha. And she said, nichevo, is it okay? And I wanted to say, it's better than okay. And I said, luch chem ni Okay, I'll have details. Um, you only make those mistakes once. Okay, sorry about that, Alexei. Um, so, how did the discussion go? What happened next? So, uh, they just uh, explained what the company, uh, not uh, talking about the name, of course. So, just in general, the responsibilities. And uh, just the require, requirements uh, for this position. Okay. So, and uh, as a, 
in the final, they ask uh, whether I'm interested or not. And were you? Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes? No, for that particular job. Was that interesting? No. Uh, as you said, I'm trying to visit as uh, much uh, interviews uh, as I can. Good man. Okay. That's the way to do it. Today I uh, was <laughs> Excellent. Okay. It really is good practice. Okay. Uh, I still think you can never get enough interview practice. Okay. Even I get headhunted sometimes. It doesn't happen very often, but sometimes. Usually, it's a foreign company who wants to open an office in Moscow and they want a foreigner who speaks Russian who can, who's been living here for a while. I always go and see them. I'm not interested in changing my job, but I want to see what they're doing. I want to see how they think they will do it. Usually they have no idea about how to do business in Russia, but for me it's usually quite funny to listen to how they think they will do it. Okay? Um, one thing, you know, you said, um, Ilya, you've, you've been to Canada. Has anyone been to England? Yeah? A few more people. Let's be closer. Okay? Um, so what's your name? Victor. Victor. How different was England when you arrived than what you expected? Ah, okay. <laughs> Who else have they been to England? What's your name? Tatiana. Tatiana. What about you? Was it different to how you expected it? Um, I'm not really sure. No? I wasn't in England for a long time, so maybe... I... What, three hours? <laughs> two hours. Oh, two weeks. Two weeks. Okay. And just London? A lot of them is Bournemouth. 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 On the coast. Yeah. In the south, yeah. Um, there are stereotypes about every place, okay? For some reason, Russians think that foreigners think there are bears on the streets, okay? Foreigners don't think this. And this is Russians think that foreigners think this. Foreigners think that in Russia, it's cold for 12 months of the year, everyone drinks vodka and nobody smiles, okay? If you are, I would guess that with your education, there's a good chance that most of you will, at some stage in your career, work for a foreign company. Okay? So, what's your name? Ina. Ina, yeah. Maybe you won't, because of your background. <laughs> I'm joking. But, um, most people probably will. Okay? And there's also a very good chance that there will be a foreigner involved in the interview process. Has anyone here been interviewed by a foreigner? As part of the job. Right, good. Okay. One of the big differences is when foreigners are conducting interviews, especially Americans, they expect you to sell yourself. And we actually have to say to foreign, to Americans, don't start the interview with, why do you want to work for us? Because the person says, I don't. Okay. So, a lot of it is about technique. Okay. That... Foreigners will expect you to sell yourselves, as I said at the beginning. They will expect you to talk, is a good phrasal verb, to talk up your experience, to really describe about why you think you're good. Now, from what I can see, a lot of Russians don't like doing this, because they think that it makes them look desperate. Am I right or not? Yeah? Okay, forget that. Do it. Okay? You won't look desperate, it's normal. Especially if you are in a customer-facing job. Obviously, if you want to be an IT programmer, then nobody is expecting you to be very proactive. Okay? If you're a lawyer, they will probably be very worried if you are proactive. But, in many cases, people will expect you, and they want you to stand out, to look a bit different from the other people. Okay? Why should they hire you? You don't have to accept the job. One thing I was taught, what's the worst thing that can happen? They don't offer you the job. Okay, you haven't lost anything. Okay. But it is important that when people come here to Russia, especially if they are like first or second time, you've probably noticed when you go abroad, the image of Russia abroad is extremely negative. Okay? Especially where? Now. Now. 
Depends where. In Belarus, it's very positive. But in, uh, um, generally, I mean, you know, many of my friends in England, my friends from school, none of them have ever been here, and none of them will ever come here. Okay? Uh, you know, when I go back to England, I just don't even talk about what I do here. Uh, they, they just don't understand it. You know, most of them think like you have to wear a bulletproof vest. Everybody's shooting. It's very dangerous. Um, I sometimes think that um, you know, Mr. Putin likes this image that Russia is a big, horrible, cold country, and I want everybody to be frightened of us. Um, maybe this is some KGB background. I don't know. But generally, the, the image is negative. So a lot of people when they come here are usually very frightened. They think that when they land in Chelyabinsk, they will be murdered, mugged, and raped at the same time. And then, of course, they arrive, and it's oh wow, it's normal. Okay. So remember, if you, it's worth trying to find out. Use LinkedIn. That when you are going for an interview with a foreigner, have a look at the person, because if the person previously worked here for five years, then it's the person will know much more about things here than if the person is here first time. Don't be frightened to ask the person, hi, you know, welcome to Russia. Have you been here before? Okay, and LinkedIn will probably tell you that. If the person lived abroad but came to Russia, most of the time there will be information about this before. Okay, so be aware of that. Don't be frightened to really boast about what you've done before. And... For some reason, this is not just foreigners, but everybody always thinks that their company is best. That everybody was born to work in their company. Okay? And many of our clients who are opening offices in Russia, they often think um, that there must be millions of people who are standing in a line from the metro ready to work for us for a thousand dollars a month. You know? And why can't we find them? Of course, we have to explain that it's a new market, there are not so many brilliant people, and nobody knows your company. Okay, so when you go for a job interview, do a little bit of research before you go in. Again, it sounds obvious, but a lot of people don't do it. So when they go for an interview and the person says, okay, thanks for coming in, take a seat. Um, what do you know about our company? Oh, um... And if you haven't got a simple response that you can talk to them briefly about what their company does, it's going to be a very short interview. Okay? Like I said, you know, it's the most obvious thing, but a lot of people don't do it. Okay? Another thing that I noticed most people don't do here is towards the end of an interview, don't be frightened about trying to close down the interviewer about what happens next. Again, this is Nibarovsky, but if you do it, you will probably be the only ones who do it. Towards the end of an interview, start asking the person, okay, you know, based on our conversation, do you think I could do the job? Okay? It's a very good question to ask. Do you think I could do the job? Because you are already finding out a little bit and most of them will be honest with you. Okay, they, they will be vague. They won't say, yeah, you're great, I want you to start tomorrow. Well, they might, but probably won't. Okay. Another question, don't be frightened to ask, how do I compare to the other candidates that you've met? Okay, again, people don't ask this. It looks like a weakness. Oh, your weakness. Why? If you ask this one. It's a strength. I think that you're weak, you're weak. Why? But if you are good, they will tell you. You are really good. No, they, they won't. They won't tell you. They might tell you. It depends. I mean, sometimes they do, but unfortunately, most of the time they don't. Well, why is it a weakness? I'm curious. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, it means that you feel not strong yourself, and you're asking. Confidence. Confidence. It's about how you see it. I mean, like, like I said, many people don't sell themselves because they think it makes them look desperate. Especially, I mean, again, it depends on the job. But, honestly, there is nothing wrong with asking that. It doesn't make you look weak. I think it makes you look strong. 
because you are trying to close down the interview. It shows that you are interested. Because if you are like, you know, then the person will think, oh, does this person really want to work for us? Okay. Um, I, I actually think it, it works because it shows, the, it shows the interviewer that you're actually interested in the job. And it gives you more of an idea. Um, ask about what, if you don't want to ask that, ask about what, what will the next steps be. Okay. Now, often they'll say, well, we'll let you know the HR department will call you or the recruiter will call you. So, yeah, I understand. Yeah, no problem. But, um, you know, would there, you know uh, would there be other rounds of interviews? Don't be frightened to ask some questions. Okay. Um, interviewers like it when people ask them questions. I usually ask the question, what made you decide to join this company? Okay. Most of the time they... They're not expecting that question. Because, again, check on LinkedIn how long the person has been there. If the person joined six months ago, you can say, I understand that you only joined the company you know, earlier this year. Um, you know, what made you decide to join? Most people will be very happy to answer that. Probably because it's the, only, it's the first time they've heard it. It just makes... It, it makes you stand out from the crowd. It just gives you... Um, remember that the person coming interviewing is quite tiring. Often somebody flies in and they're interviewing seven people in a day. And by the end of the day, they've met, you know, Vasya, Pieter, Kolya. And at the end of the day, it's, which one are they going to remember? They're going to remember the one that was a little bit different. Okay. Sorry, sorry what, what's your name? Hi, one. Ivan. Yes. Yeah. Um, try doing it as an interview where you don't really want the job. Okay. okay? <laughs> try it. Maybe don't do it in the one where you really want the job, but try doing it for one where, um, you know, again, you've got to be careful with certain situations because uh, one girl asked me once, um, you know, there was some application form and it said strengths and weaknesses and as a joke, you know, weaknesses, she wanted to write tall, dark, handsome men. And I said, I'd be careful here because, you know, somebody might think it's funny. But if you get some stierva, then she won't think it's funny and the application will go into the bin. So, you know, it can work both ways. It'll either be very positive or very negative. Okay, so you want to be a little bit different, but not too different. Okay, right. <coughs> what does this mean? I appeared on a TV program about a year ago called, um, there was a question, Lublu Linina Vijus Fayura Bordo. And they did some questionnaire, I don't know who they asked, um, across Russia, and 50% 50 50 of people said they hated their job. 30% or 20% said they loved it. 10%, I think 30% was like Vorimi Aplata Di Um Now, again, everything depends on you. Because when they asked for my comment, I said, you know, as you say, like, answer the question with a question by saying, okay, my question to people is, what have you done to try to change this? Okay, your situation. And far too many people in life don't do anything about it. They prefer to sit and complain. Okay, now, my upbringing was that, you know, I, maybe I was lucky. I didn't have Talwani or Difficilti. Okay, but nobody gave me anything. Okay, I came to Russia in the 1990s. Okay, now, growing up in England, the more polite you are, the more chance there is that people will help you. And in the 90s in Russia, it was the complete opposite. Okay? It was Padumuch Totinisiriosne. And for us, it was very difficult going to a hotel, and instead of Dobritia, they say, yes, yes. And maybe for you guys, this is normal, you grew up with it. For us, it wasn't. Okay? So you will find yourselves in strange situations, but there is only one person that's going to solve the problem for you, and that's you. Okay? That 
the fact that you guys are on this program is already very big progress. Okay? I think it's fantastic. And I'm very lucky in my job that I get to meet some really intelligent, ambitious people. Unfortunately, there are not enough of them. Okay? So, <clears throat> when it comes to changing things, the only one who can change something is you guys. Okay? It's thinking about you know, what you want to achieve and what you need to do. It. Don't be frightened to ask recruiters when you go for an interview with a recruitment company and say, look, I'd like to do this. You know, what do I need to do? Okay, recruiters are recruiters. They are not career coaches. But they should be able to give you some advice on what you would need to do. Right. <coughs> Most of this is inside this book. For the people who came a bit later, I will give you all one of these. Don't be shy. Okay? There's a list of things we recommend and a list of things we don't recommend. Okay? Please understand that recruiters cannot guarantee to find you a new job. Okay? You do need to be realistic about what you can do. If you've been working in one area, it's very difficult for a recruitment company to find you a job in a completely different area. You might get this through one of your contacts or directly. You probably won't get this through a recruitment agency. Okay? From us, clients want a perfect candidate. Okay? Um, recruiters will always try and get you the highest salary possible. Okay? Why? Because we work on Pratsan. Okay? So it's in our interests to get you the highest salary possible. So be honest about how much you earn. Another thing, when you are talking, especially to foreigners, about salaries, do not give your salary as net. No foreigner will understand this. Even if you explain it ten times, they will not understand this. Okay? Because abroad, the only people who get net salary is people who, like, Zanimait Sekandarabandam, or, you know, Rabodut um, Nastroika. Okay? So, don't do it. They will not understand it. And the result will be that you say, oh, you know, I earn 100,000 rubles net. Okay, you actually earn 115,000. The person will just write down 100,000 rubles and they will think that this is the gross figure. No matter how many times you explain it, they will not understand it. Okay? So please give a gross salary. Also, be aware that many foreign companies... Uh, and usually abroad, salaries are done annually, not by month, not per month. If you want to give a month figure, put it in the CV. Okay? Again, when writing a CV, this might sound stupid, but please write that you speak Russian. Okay? I see CVs and people don't write that they speak Russian. Okay? They just write English fluent. And I say, do you speak Russian? <laughs> and I say, like, well, how do they know? <laughs> And because the CV will often go to some HR department in Europe or America. And I've seen situations where it says, the person just says, this person doesn't speak the local language. Atkas. <laughs> okay? It's like, it's like, okay. There are many people, I've met people in America with Russian names who speak no Russian. Okay? So, don't think it's obvious. Small things like, if you put your mobile phone number on there, don't put Vasnorka, don't put eight, put plus seven. Because if somebody is phoning you from abroad, eight will not work, they will not call you. Okay? Again, it sounds silly, but it, sometimes these small things can be the difference between getting a job or not. Because they'll just say, oh, we couldn't get through to this person. Okay? So things, again, you know, which sound obvious. Don't assume, don't just think, oh, you know, everybody will understand this. Okay? Um, bear that in mind, I'm not going to go through all of those, okay, because we've been through a number of them already. Um, that's pretty much it. Right? What I'd like to ask is,
If anyone's got any specific questions, one thing I will do is I will give you all a card, okay? And oops. Our company website is on here. Have a look. It's worth registering. You'll get an idea of the jobs that are there. Okay? Even if you are not looking for something immediately. Oh dear. Um, that does happen. Yes. 
Okay? Yeah. Everywhere. <laughs> Fortunately or unfortunately. Uh, anyone else? Yeah. I have a question. Yeah, you've been talking mostly about foreign culture of recruiters and recruiters uh, from abroad. Do your recommendations work, work for Russian recruiters and Russian companies with di some different culture and uh, maybe mentality? Close, um, closer to... Yeah, it's hard to generalize because Russian companies are so different. You know, you, you have some companies which are like, you know, you know, but then you have some Russian companies which are very, very international style. And then you have, like, lots who are somewhere in the middle. Now, there are some where, you know, everybody is hired for It's like, almost with the one with the other video you bought. Now, you probably don't want to go and work for that kind of company. You might. Okay, but... You know, I've been to places, I've been to a lot of strange places in Russia, and, you know, when people find out, it's like, you know, what do you do? And I say, I work for a recruitment company, and usually there is one, oh, and I, and I tell them what it is. And they're like, oh, it's a new studio, isn't it? Um, you know, so, it depends on what you want to do. Now, um, things are maturing a lot. Things have become much more professional. Okay, but not everywhere. Please remember that, the recruitment business, okay, there's a lot of agencies, there's hundreds of agencies, okay, and there's a lot of very bad agencies, okay, why? Because there is no license, it's not about like a bank or a law firm or an oil company, you don't need a license to do recruitment. Should, if you, should be licensed. <laughs> um, possibly, but it's not, there's no country in the world where it is, it would be very difficult to legislate it because there's a lot of companies who do some kind of consulting plus recruitment. I would say the usual problem is when people are unrealistic about what they can expect. Some people expect us to find me a job. I receive a lot of a lot of resumes, a lot of CVs from people abroad who say, you know, hi, you know, I live in Germany, England, Israel, America. I have a Russian girlfriend. Can you find me a job in Russia? Yeah, oh, and, and the answer is no, without even opening the CV. <laughs> okay, um, you know, in the end, if companies want a foreigner, almost always they send in their own person. For a few years, this person hires a team, and then either goes to another country or goes home. You know, for a city, you know, Moscow is the biggest city in Europe. Um, so of course, there's a lot of foreigners because there's a lot of companies, but. Most big companies actually don't employ that many foreigners. It's very rare a company asks us to find a foreigner. It's less than 1% of the time. Okay, so to answer the question, it depends very much on the recruiter you deal with and the company itself. But ask questions. Okay, ask about the recruitment process. And I've seen in some Russian companies, even when there is a good HR person, the person struggles because the vice president comes downstairs and says, this is my friend Yevgeny, he started today, find him a job somewhere. I thought, what? I need to see his CV, you know, I need to... No, 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 he's already started, you know, find him something. He's my friend from university. Okay, so every company is different. A lot of companies on the outside give one image, and then when you actually go meet them, it's completely different. Okay, that's another reason for going to lots of interviews, to see how it all works. Uh, normally, recruiters are not big fans of, of testing. There's nothing wrong with them. But generally, we go on experience and how we meet the person. Because usually, companies tell us approximately what they want. We are not paid to be creative. Okay? Companies say we want someone who's done more or less this kind of job in this kind of company. Um, test, you know, it's, a, it's a nice to have. Okay, 
most vacancies are never posted. Not on a website, not with a recruiter. In fact, a lot of companies don't even know themselves that they are hiring people. Okay? Even big companies. Because the line manager somewhere thinks, I probably need someone in this area somewhere at some stage. Um, and then a C, you know, but he has, he's too busy to think about it. And suddenly you send your CV. And companies like proactive people. So the simple answer is yes, do it. Don't ever be frightened, okay, about sending out your CV. What's the worst? The worst thing that can happen is they press delete. Okay, to me that's not a very big problem. And it is, it is also true for from experience. Both. Don't ever be worried. You know, if you if you've got a good profile, but write on the email you know, why you think you could be good, not just what you've done. Because companies want you to help them grow their business. Who else said that? Uh, talking about uh, the application process, so now it's very easy just to post uh, the CV on Headhunter and just send the application and waiting for the answer. So as you said, it's uh, maybe better to send to the common email corporate email both of uh, or just to find in LinkedIn some HR recruitment and just send him or call, maybe even call to the company just yeah. to be sure that the CV was delivered. What I would recommend is be proactive. Don't just post it on Headhunter. That's too reactive. Okay? If there's a company that you really want to work for, you've always dreamed of working for, Use, use the company website. Find out who is the decision maker. It's not very difficult. Okay? And, and most of the time, the email will be name dot surname at company.com and send it. You know, and if it doesn't get and if it bounces back, call the company and say, I just sent an email to this person. Because a lot of the time, if it's, you know, um, Tatiana, you can write it with I, you can write it with Y, you know, so call up, find out. <coughs> Companies like that. They might pretend they don't, but they really do. So it's not at all just to call to the... Yeah, they call them up. To a recruiter Yeah, they might pretend, that, as I said, they, they might say they don't like it because they're busy. But it, it makes you different because nobody else really does that. So do it. Who, who here had their hand up? Yeah. Uh, look, and in your current experience, do you have more people, local people looking for jobs abroad or foreigners looking for uh, local jobs? Um, the simple answer is, the majority of our vacancies are here in Russia for Russians. Uh, it's very rare that a company asks us to find a Russian to work somewhere else. If they do, it's usually like Kiev or Almaty, you know, or Sakhalin. Um, what I've found is that most of the Russians who work in, for example, London, usually they are people who were sent there by their existing company, like a practical or they graduated from a, 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 um, you know, an MBA school in London, they decided to stay, they work for a company with a Russia desk that wants them to do something with Russia, because that's the benefit they give. The foreigners that either want to come here, nearly always because they've got a girlfriend, if they are here already and they want to stay, it's because their contract is finished, they have a girlfriend and they want to stay. Um, and, but the problem is that their benefit to the company is their internal knowledge. And most of them don't speak much Russian. They don't really understand life outside of their sort of small office in the middle of Moscow. Um, so most of the time we can't help them. So, and you know, we sometimes deal with Russians who have lived abroad who want to come back, what we call repats. Okay? But again, if somebody left in 1991, and has been back twice for a week to visit, then they're not going to be of much use here. That's what I usually say. Um, if you want to get some work experience abroad, definitely do it. But the longer you spend abroad, the more difficult it will be to get a job back here. Right? The chance of me getting a job in England or Canada is zero. I've been here too long. Okay? Um, so bear that in mind. It's, it's all about how relevant it is. Anyone else? Look, what would be your advice about MBA degree? Um, 
I don't think I've ever met a bad MBA graduate. Okay? MBA graduates tend to be good because they themselves are good. It's very rare that some, you know, like Bizdielnik, Gopnik decides, oh, I want to do an MBA. All right? It's just not the, the same sort of thing. Okay? <coughs> your MBAs generally will help you in your career. The MBA itself, not just the wording. Okay? Um, so, put it on your CV, but don't be surprised when companies actually want to talk a little bit more about your experience in a previous job than just your studies. Okay? Because it's, a lot of it's theoretical. Now, you can apply it, but one complaint from many employers is they say, okay, have you done this? Oh, well, we did a case study. Yeah, but have you done it? No. Okay, so I'm not saying anything bad about it. Use the theory in your work, and I'm pretty sure, generally, the people with the MBAs usually have faster and more successful careers than the people who don't in certain jobs. Okay, but... Don't just think, you know, oh, I've got an MBA, I can immediately demand more money. Uh, is there a discrimination in, in companies that uh, hire foreigners and compared to Russians? But in salary? Um, you mean inside recruitment companies or in just generally? Generally, inside a company, two people are doing the same thing, one from England, one from Russia. Um, I like being more the English, English people because they think that he would uh, tend to be Russian less or something. No, I, I don't think so. First of all, I mean, people ask me this, like in England, oh, if there's a black guy and a white guy, you know, which one will they choose? And, you know, if they're identical. You never have a situation where there are two identical people. Never. We don't do cloning. I wish we did because we'd make more money, but we don't. Okay? <laughs> Generally, usually, a foreigner comes in for you know, a period of three years, and then they go somewhere else, and fairly quickly, you know, the task of this person is to build a team. And actually, foreigner salaries are actually usually not that much different from Russian salaries. What makes the foreigner expensive, if they were posted here, is the fact they have to pay for an apartment in Rosinka, and a driver, and flights home, and schooling for three children, and you know, driver for their wife and manicure, you know. So, this is what makes the person expensive. So, usually, companies will only have a very small number of foreigners, okay? And uh, generally, the foreigner is hired not because they know Russia, but because they know the company inside. So, generally, the positions we want, they want Russians. The drive is very much for local people. It depends on the industry. Okay, name an industry where they don't... Banking. 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 They are not foreign. Um, usually in foreign banks, all top managers are there, there are some, no, There are some companies like that, but usually that's because of the corporate culture. Okay, sometimes, you know, um, sometimes it's trust. Like, even if you go to a very big multinational, the finance director is probably going to be an expat uh, from somewhere. But, again, the word expat... Um, you know, if an American works in London, we don't call it an expat. It's just somebody working in a different country. You know, Russians seem to make a much bigger thing about nationalities than we do. We, we don't really think about it because we don't care. Um, you know, it's like, can you do the job? Now, there are situations where companies will probably bring somebody in. You know, um, as I said, there will always be expats here. Um, sometimes where it's a new line of business... Another one is the big four accountancy firms. They have, they have a lot of foreigners. Um, but, I mean, in Antal, we have 125 people in Moscow. We've got three foreigners. Okay, or three non-CIS. Um, so, I wouldn't, worry too, I wouldn't worry too much about that. Um, eventually, you know, if you're good and you feel that there's, you know, that there's a ceiling, there will be jobs in other places for you. Don't worry. Do you think executive MBA is valuable as well as the uh, normal one? Um, again, I think 
Honestly, I think more companies are actually, again, they like it. Um, the executive one, I think the advantage is the fact that you're still working. Okay, because far too often when people take two years out of their career to do an MBA full time, they're not working during those two years. So they've lost two years of actual work experience. So um, I would say I wouldn't worry too much about that. You know, focus on your career with the additional study. I noticed Russians like studying. I've noticed this. Okay, I stopped studying when I was 21. All right, quiet. Okay, um, no, I've been on lots of training courses and things since then. I haven't done an MBA study. Okay, because for what I do, it, it, you know, I've done lots of different courses. Okay, so studying is good so long as it's relevant. Okay. Um, it's all about how you then apply it. If you go to a training course and, you know, basically don't listen to it and then get a certificate, well, it's pretty useless. In the end, it's about what you get out of it. And there's a lot of things that I find you can't just teach someone. You have to learn how to do it. Okay? My first ever job was selling the stands at the Wistovka Moskovsky after Salon, the Moscow Motor Show in the mid-1990s to foreign companies, right? Believe me, if, you know, this was not easy. Persuading foreign companies to come to Russia in the mid-1990s to buy a very expensive stand to show their likes up chest. Okay? Most of them are like, where? Russia? Oh. You know, if people, if you think the image is negative today, it was a lot worse then. Okay? So you got lots of people saying no before somebody said yes. But it was very, very good experience. I didn't like it, but it's been extremely useful for future jobs. Okay, so what you learn here, okay, I would say apply it to what you are doing in your day job. Okay, put those two together and you'll do well. Anyone else before everyone falls asleep? Not very often, no. It's usually a nice to have. Okay, it's, it's an additional thing, but it's very rare. Like, yeah, if you had two identical candidates and one had an MBA and one didn't. So they just say, find me someone who... Yeah, find someone who's done this, this, this. Okay, again, it depends where. Um, finance companies and banks like MBAs. Okay, if you work for a software company, they probably don't care. Okay, um... So again, it, it does depend on the industry. It also depends on the hiring manager. There are some hiring managers who themselves did an MBA, so they like it. Some of them think, oh, you know, I don't need that. So they don't like it. Okay, so it's difficult to generalize just because it comes down to personality so often. Okay, you know, like I said, every company is different. Every hiring manager is different. I mean, we had a call from a journalist from, I think it was Vietnamese, who wanted to do a big article about the best employer in Russia. And I just said, look, this is very subjective, okay? You know, you have Coca-Cola and Pepsi, well, the product is nearly the same, okay? But the corporate culture is very different. So, but it doesn't mean it's good or bad, okay? Um, you know, personally, I would find it very difficult to work for a German company. I think, you know, it's just far too pragmatic. But, again, there's a lot of people who are very happy working like that. Um, you know, Japanese companies, you know, um, uh, again, have a very specific way of doing things. But there's a lot of very successful Japanese companies, and there's a lot of people who work for them and like working for them. So it's not about whether something is good or bad. In the end, it's about what you like to do. Okay? Um, it's the same thing people say, like, you know, should I join a foreign company or a Russian company? I cannot make that decision for you. You know, I generally find that if somebody has spent a long career in a Western company, a foreign company, it's sometimes quite difficult for them to go into a mid-level, at a mid-level into a Russian company, because the culture is so different. But again, you know, I can't say that in every case. You know, I would say generally try it. Okay, and... Don't be afraid to try something. 
Okay. Um, you know, I came here with two suitcases. I didn't speak Russian. I didn't understand the mentality here. Um, I don't have like you know Dedushka Vice President Gazpromia. Okay, unfortunately, but I decided I wanted to do it. Okay, and why? That's a separate question. But I realised when I was young, I wanted to come and live in Russia. Okay. Um, one of the best things about business in Russia is there is very, very little competition here. Okay. Simple example, just before we finish. When we opened our office in Almaty, okay, um, anyone know approximately, what's the population of Kazakhstan? Anyone know? Very good. Okay. 13 recruitment companies in the whole of Kazakhstan. Moscow, similar population, about 15 million. 300 recruitment companies. London, 8 million. 15,000 recruitment companies. Okay, there are more recruitment companies around the around our, the metro where our headquarters is than in the whole of Moscow. Okay, there's very little competition here for whatever it is you're doing. So the good news is that you know you only have to be good to be very successful. You don't have to be an absolute star. So hopefully, stars here will be even better. Okay. You have to be an optimist to live in uh, an optimist to live in Russia, in my opinion. But I am. Okay, I see people generally having very, very good careers here. I see it with what I do. I've been here 11 years with Antal, and I see people that I interviewed 9, 10, 11 years ago who were at some sort of low, mid level, and now many of them are quite senior. Okay, so uh, I hope that I will meet. Some of you again in the future. Okay, I hope it's been useful. Don't be frightened to you know drop me an email, find me on LinkedIn, have a look at our website. You know, let me know if you've got any questions. Don't be frightened about giving out our website to anyone you know who's looking around. Okay, good luck. All right, and um, yeah, let me know if there's you know if you want to ask something privately, not in front of everyone else, then no problem. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Who didn't get one of these?